Hi, and welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. We're at Serverless Comp Austin for a day of podcasting, talking about serverless technologies, those who are using these emerging technologies, and the practitioners and vendors who are helping users to onboard and adopt serverless methodologies. Hi, I'm Benjamin Ball, the New Stack. Today we're joined by Charity Majors, CEO of Honeycomb. Charity, it's great to have you today. Thank you. I'm really happy to have made it. Well, we're at a serverless conference, Austin, and it's uh, been a pretty good first day of the conference. Uh, we're pretty excited to talk about Honeycomb. We did an article about you guys recently. Yeah, you recently you did. launched last week. Is that yeah. true? Last week, two weeks ago, yeah. feels like half a year ago. <laughs> recently. Very recently. And uh, so I thought maybe we'd start off the conversation with uh, just a little bit about Honeycomb and uh, what it is and what it does and what you do there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Honeycomb is kind of a new way of approaching um, the questions that every engineer has. What's happening? Like, what just happened? What's happening now? What's about to happen? Uh, I feel like it's sort of the next generation of how people think about things like monitoring and observability and um, and complex systems, you know, it's not just about debugging. It's not just about when things break, because like a system is never 100% down or 100% up, you know. And if your stats, if your dashboards say you're 100% up, then they're lying to you, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And we're trying to help empower software engineers to really kind of be in the driver's seat of their own destiny, you know. <laughs> they haven't really had these tools, and there's so much. There's like this latent fear that engineers have. Uh, when it comes to making changes, which is legitimate. Things break when you make changes, you know? Historically, that's been the job of ops, you know? Uh, the software engineers write the things, somebody deploys them, and then ops is like, this, this breaks, this doesn't break. And like, we all know that this entire paradigm is like, it's broken. Yeah. It was always broken. Um, it's become very obviously broken. And um, we're trying to help the people who build the services understand what's happening and make changes. So does it really matter if it's a dev or an ops person? It does not matter. Like, like every ops is a dev and every yeah. dev is an ops, you know? And I feel like- It's kind of the standpoint we have too. Right? So. Like, it, exactly. Like they're, they're useful kind of a framework for thinking about roles that people play. Um, but like, <laughs> It's like the first wave of DevOps. I've been trying to popularize this. I really believe that it's true. But like, I feel like the first wave of DevOps was like people telling ops people like me, get better at coding. Like, wake up and do not just coding, but software engineering. You know, mm -hmm. there's a big difference. You know, tests. You know, uh, engineering as a discipline is not just slapping scripts together. And I feel like like, I heard that. You know, I, it changed the way that I that I build things. It was really meaningful to me. Um, and I feel like it's time for us to turn it around and say, okay, software engineers, time to learn how to architect and support your own fucking services. <laughs> it's uh, kind of something we've sort of been hearing here today is Good. when we talk, a, we talk a lot about, people come to me a lot and ask who reads a new stack and I say uh, devs but that doesn't mean anything because yeah. they're devs that are also ops, they're also yeah. sy uh, sysadmins, they're also running the databases, I mean they're doing everything. It's like saying I'm a chef but I don't chop vegetables. Yes, <laughs> actually, that's a, actually I might pull out the kitchen <laughs> metaphors, uh, yeah. latch onto a metaphor, I'll stay on it. but. Um, that's a, it's interesting to me, and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you reiterate that of the sort of maybe focusing on the issue that needs to be solved and not necessarily totally. who's doing it. Like, we're we want to do for observability what Docker has just done for release engineering. You know, uh, Docker is not about containers. The containers have existed for decades. Ask anyone who's ever used Solaris, and they get just steam coming out of their head, right? Uh, but it was about making release engineering a self-serve and like a native part of every developer's daily work. Is uh, would you consider that as part of uh, wave one DevOps this year? I think that that's wave two. You okay. know, I think that like it's like you know, so there's writing code which every software engineer does. That's what we're taught to do in school, right? But then. The life cycle of code, you know, uh, from the what needs to exist. Well, that's a business problem, you know. 
translating it into specific like software tasks, cool, that's software engineers bread and butter. Then there's like, you know, unit tests, that's like almost to what's gonna happen in the real world. Um, but then there's like, okay, you've got your code out there in the real world. And if you think about it, like writing software compared to maintaining software, you can round that down to zero. It takes zero time to develop software compared to the amount of time it takes to support that software over its life cycle. So it's insane for that not, to not be just like one of the most important things that every developer ever thinks about, you know? And that long tail of like operations, that's where people like me have historically like, I don't build stuff from, this is a huge, like starting a company, <laughs> I can't believe it happened. Like I don't do greenfield shit. I don't enjoy it. I like taking something that someone has found that kind of works but is important and making it really work, mm -hmm. you know? And that, that job of making it really work is what we want to help software engineers like do. And, and do in a way that is not painful, but in a way where they're like, I, I, I am becoming a better engineer by using this. It makes me feel good because that fear about what's happening, I don't know what's happening, I can't, you know, I can reliably find it in seconds or minutes, you know, every time. And the other thing that we're really excited about is just taking the approach of like, Debugging is a social sport. Mm -hmm. Like it so is. Like software engineering is not a solo, it's not a solo profession. You know, like we debug on the shoulders of giants. Like anyone who doesn't acknowledge that is like fooling themselves. But like I feel like people are going straight from this this like single node, single person, you know, you know, which is the caricature of how it used to be. They're jumping straight to like Machine learning, um, automated, you know, uh, you know, remediation and like, you know, predictive analytics. And I'm like, we're skipping something really big there, which is like, what does your team think? Um, if you're on call this week, what happened last week? You know, um, if I get, if I'm on call and it's 2 a.m. and I get paged about a Cassandra problem, the first thing I think of is, did anyone else just have this problem? You know, and we're baking these in the honeycomb is like, is like. The, the primitives, you know, like, like if you ever wish you had a bash history, but for every like question you've ever asked, you know, cool, we've got that. What about the questions that your team is asking? What about the aggregates, like a heat map of like, you know, it's almost like a runbook, but it's like an interactive, it's like an emergent runbook of how you use your production systems. I have been like, go please. No, pause. I, I was gonna say that does sound like wave two DevOps to me because it's it's. Uh, something that we constantly hear about DevOps is, is there should be a refining of, we had this problem and we fixed it before. Yeah. If I get a pager in the middle of the night, I should know, okay, Tony had this problem earlier and here's how I fix it. What's crazy is our tools don't do that. They fight us in that. Like every single one of them is, is, is a person, a node, a, you know, there's not, there's no sense of history and there's no sense of, of your team. And it's crazy once you start looking for it, it's like, and, and I'm not saying, yes, I'm trying to sell something, I'm a vendor, but like, I, more than that, I We're want all everyone to who, sell something. thank you. I want everyone who's in this space to be thinking about this, about history and finding things and it, sharing. It, it's interesting because uh, a lot of the topics you're talking about, uh, in one of the keynotes earlier, they talked about the top three, uh, basically things that users of serverless framework were saying don't work for them is monitoring, debugging, and testing. Those were the it's things so that they cared the most about. It's so true. And the observability stack is basically what everyone has been talking about here today. I'm sure awesome. we're gonna hear more about it yeah. tomorrow. I haven't written my talk yet. I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> and I'm so glad to hear you say that because that makes my job easy. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'll even send you a picture awesome. of that slide. Awesome, please. But it's, it's something where, not super surprised to hear that yeah. this is important. Um, it sounds like serverless makes that kind of operational visibility that much more important? Important and harder, you know, because it's a black box and it's someone else's black box. You can't SSH in as a last resort. Yeah, so it seems like the challenge, I was going to say the challenge for the ops team, but it's really a challenge for everyone is actually yes. getting into that and collecting yes. the data. Um, yes. I'm guessing real-time data is a big component here. And here's here. the thing, um, you don't have an ops team, or rather you do, but they're on the other side of an API, right? There's someone else's ops team. And this makes it, I think that the awesome thing, I'm thinking about this right now as we're talking, the awesome thing about serverless is it makes explicit the fact that if you want to get data out, it's the responsibility of the person who's writing the code. You can't lean on someone else's like, gem install new relic or anything. You have to think about what needs to be exposed and get it out as you're developing. 
Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? I don't. I, we probably keep going on forever oh, about yeah. this, but is there anything else you think is really critical to hit on before we wrap up our conversation? Maybe, and maybe actually, what is the near-term focus for Honeycomb? What you guys are really uh, looking yeah. to double down on right now? Yeah. So, I'll. My marketing person's probably going to scold me for this, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. Um, SaaS is the future. You know. I'm so tired of hearing, when are you going to do on-prem? <laughs> um, the only reason anyone would say that is for compliance reasons. So we have a solution to that. Um, if you want to know more, let us know. <laughs> oh, I, I want to know more. So uh, Next time. maybe we'll follow up on that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's uh, something. Is the future. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and general software engineers of the future and making okay. things available. Actually, we could do a whole podcast about that. Totally. So maybe we'll have to revisit. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Charity. I think we had a, a pretty interesting conversation. Thanks for squeaking a, me in at the last a, minute. A lot of threads that we can probably suss out in the future. Totally. So, uh, so it's great having you. Thank you. Thanks. Listen to more episodes of the Newstack Makers at the newstack.io slash podcasts. Also, please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening and see you next time.